Well, it's been very exciting to be involved in the first three-star CCI on the west coast of America. Um, my whole theory about cross-country riding is that it should be riding across the country, should be open distances, riders should be able to ride committed on a good line. And I want to try and get away from the pulling, twisting and turning of the sort of arena practice type fences. I don't want to see people pulling their horses around. So the first three fences here at Galway Downs, the straightforward, big straightforward introduction to the course. This is fence four. It's the first combination on the course. We've got a big palisade here, um, downhill approach. So the riders have got to be sitting up thinking, then they land and then they've got a committed four stride down through this hollow to this big um, oxer. Uh, it's not that difficult, the actual jumps. It's more the terrain. Um, but you'll see here, we've got the frangible pins under both these poles. So if there's any mistake, um, the, the jumps should give way. Um, but this is the first question on the course, fence four, A, B, and then it's like a gentle introduction to the next question, the coffin at five, which is fairly serious. So this is the coffin at fence five. Ramp up, pretty steep. Horses and riders have got to be balanced on their approach. And then they've got to ride up to this um, log at the top of the mound. It's one of these uh, polystyrene poles. It should break if anyone gets into difficulty, but hopefully no problems. Jump over it, and then they've got to land on a steep downhill. So they're gonna land well out, then a stride, short stride, and then big ditch. Um, it, right, it looks quite long between the rail and the ditch, but because it's downhill, the horses balloon out over this ditch, do a big jump, and then they've got a committed two strides up another ramp to a skinny triple brush. So it's, it's all about being in control, um, but having a powerful balance canter. Um, the horse has got to be thinking what the rider wants. It's early on the course, and if, if the riders and the horses go through here well, then I think they're up for a good run around the course. Well, we're now at fence 9AB. It's the moat. It seems to be the fence that's causing all the discussion in the barn. A lot of the riders are very concerned about it. In fact, um, only this morning, they asked if we could have an alternative for the B part. So, and um, we'll talk about that in a minute, but the direct line over the moat, angled brush, skinny angled brush, they've got to get on their, get on their line, be accurate, and then hold the line to the second one. And this is where the real problems are gonna come in. We put these two chess pieces here on the right so that the riders are unable to do a bending line. So they've got to stay on a straight line. They can bounce off this second one a little bit. And this tall grass here is going to help hold them in. But suddenly when they get here, there's very little for the horses to aim at. And there's a big, huge gap on the right here. So it's like an invitation to run out. Um, the riders are very concerned that if they run out, the horses might not understand to go back for a second attempt. So if they have a run out there, they have to come all the way around to the two star corner. So it's a big circle round. Then they jump the two star corner coming this way, and then they've got to get back on their track. So if they're going to do that, the first alternative, they're not going to be winning the competition, but it is a let up to let them get round if they have a run out at the B part, which they think is the most difficult on the course. So straight from the moat to the corral here, um, a lot of galloping between the fences, so the riders have really got to sit up and pay attention here. Bit of a turn into it to help them set their horses up, but the two very, very vertical upright rails. No major ground line, no flowers, no decoration. The only thing we have are the sheep here on the right, courtesy of Chris Wood, um, and we just hope that the horses aren't going to spook at them. So they've got two strides in the middle, and then another copy of the same vertical fence. Again, the tops. I've got the frangible pins, so if the riders get into difficulty, pins break and this pole drops. But it's, it's a, quite a question, I think. They're vertical, the horses have been galloping, riders have got to do enough to set the horses up and make sure they jump these clean. Whilst the riders think the moat at fence 9 is the most difficult on the course, I have a sneaky feeling that this 15 here will cause the most trouble. It's a huge ditch and brush into space with an enormous drop landing and as if that wasn't enough the riders are going to have slipped the reins they're going to be riding with long reins down to this narrow triple brush and from my feeling 
we might get quite a few running past this brush simply because the riders are out of balance, the horses are on their forehand and if they try to make any adjustments to the steering with the reins in between these two brush fences then out the side door and 20 penalties. So fence 18, the sunken road, they've had a downhill approach off the racetrack and then another of these frangible poles that should collapse if the riders get into difficulty. But they've got to set up properly, they've got to land in here, no stride, touch down, bounce down into the sunken road and then once they get down here commit forward to the step up, one stride in the bottom and then they've got another stride on the top to this skinny log. If they get into any difficulty in the sunken road they can miss this and go around to the alternative the crazy rails but I should think at this stage in the course most riders will pop through this sunken road looking like a gymnastic exercise at home. So three fences from home, fence 24, the double of hedges off the top of the berm. It looks fairly innocuous, fairly insignificant, but it's quite a long one stride. The horses are going to give a big jump over that first brush and it might just be a little bit of survival over the second one, depending on how tired the horses are. They should take one stride and they're going to be standing off the second brush quite a lot. The problems would come if a horse is tired and it gets two strides in and gets underneath it. But the brush is fairly soft and forgiving, so hopefully it won't take any scalps at this stage on the course. So that's a quick look at the cross-country course for the first three-star, three-day event on the west coast of America. It's a really difficult task for a designer. We're always under pressure. The riders all have their own ideas and we, the course designers, have our ideas. But my plan here is to keep the standard up to three star, ask quite a lot of questions, but to encourage riders to keep coming back in the future. So whilst it's proper three star competition, I don't want to go over the top and frighten the riders. So I'm hoping at the end of the day, we have a lot of satisfied and happy horses and riders.